Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Welcome to our worship on this Palm Sunday morning. A very special to welcome to anyone who is joining us for the first time. My name is Sarah and I'm one of the ministers at St Barnabas on the Stroud Road in Gloucester. I'm joined this morning by a number of the team. You'll see them a little bit later, thanks to the wonderful skills of our communications team. Thanks again to them. This morning is going to be an amazing time of worship together, after which we're going to have some fellowship time using Zoom. Um, do you bring a cup of coffee with you and Catherine will be hosting that so we can just catch up with one another and see how we're doing. You should have received an invitation to that session. If not, just message me after our worship has finished this morning. So to start with this morning, have something in your hand that you're able to wave in celebration. It could be last year's palm cross, maybe some branches from the garden, paper palm cross that you made. There was um, a how to do that on the page a little earlier in the week. Or maybe even the palm of your hand, you could draw a cross on that. Of course, with all our hand washing, it won't be on there for very long. I'm going to wave this one lovely palm leaf that we made at Messy Church on Friday, along with this rather amazing donkey which may appear later, may not appear later. So I'm going to be waving my palm leaf and we're going to make some noise together in a little short while. You might want to open your window, really let the neighbours hear that we are celebrating this morning on this Palm Sunday. So keep that in your hands for later and I'll tell you when we're going to be using that. Uh, we're going to be singing, we're going to be celebrating and we are going to be just welcoming Jesus in. So we begin this morning. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. So now hold up your palm leaf, your palm cross, your hand, whatever you have to hand, so to speak, and we're going to pray together. So hold them up, let us pray. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms or special symbols be for us signs of victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we're now going to listen to the first of our readings known as the Palm Gospel. The celebration, the excitement, the moment when Jesus enters Jerusalem. Good morning. Our reading for today is taken from Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. We were lucky enough this week to have Rosa, one of our children's ministers, write her thoughts and reflections on Palm Sunday and what Palm Sunday meant to her. 
This is in our Church Matters sheet. So if you haven't received one and would like to receive our notice sheet, our new sheet, then please do let me know and I'll make sure you get one. Either leave a message below or contact me directly. Now, Rosa wrote very thoughtfully on the call to joy, the call to joy that each of us has as disciples of Jesus. And this was also a theme that Ellie, one of our worship leaders, shared at our last praise and prayer session. Now, I don't think Ellie and Rosa compared notes beforehand, but even if they did, I think there's a pattern emerging here for us at St Barnabas. When a theme keeps bubbling up, I think we have to sit up and take notice because perhaps God is trying to tell us something. I believe the call to joy is real and something that each of us as followers of Jesus must respond to. But being joyful is not the same thing as being happy. Being joyful is not denying those other difficult, perhaps darker emotions, nor is it living in a detached way from our current very challenging circumstances. I believe the joy that we need to focus on this Palm Sunday is not a joy of consideration, a joy of resolution, a joy that we choose. But I believe the joy that we are called to as followers of Jesus comes only from God. And we must pray to God to fill us with this joy. Why? Because as it says in the Bible, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We might be struggling, sad and despairing, but our God is joyful because he delights in each of us. So for us to be joyful, we must be joy filled, filled with that joy that comes only from God in which we find our strength. So know this today. However you are feeling, God is joyful. God loves you and delights in you. And I believe we need to pray to God to fill us with that joy today. Because that joy, my friends, is where we will find the strength to walk through Holy Week and beyond into the weeks and months to come. Amen.
So now a time to bring before God those things that trouble us, those things that maybe should trouble us, those things that we try hard not to think about. A moment of confession, a moment to say sorry to God. We are quick to claim faith in Jesus, but we are slow to live fully and everywhere as faithful disciples. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We are quick to want the blessings of faithfulness, but we are slow to accept the challenges of living as your disciples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We are quick to claim the role of your follower, but we are slow to proclaim your good news to the all we meet. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So hear words of God's forgiveness, the God who loves you. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. So the special prayer today for Palm Sunday. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, Grant us the faith to know you and to love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. So a moment as a forgiven people of God, as brothers and sisters together, to share a sign of God's peace with one another. We can do that either by making the sign of the peace. Um, you can do it by typing a sign, typing peace be with you um, below in the little box as ever, or in whatever way that you would like to do that this morning. So Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body on the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you. So peace be with you this morning, my friends. May God bless you. This morning we've heard about the joyful time when Jesus was greeted with shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna and people were waving palm leaves. But not long after that time they were shouting crucify him, crucify him. And this is where we hear the story in the Gospel of Matthew about Jesus's trial and subsequent crucifixion. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd anyone whom they wanted. At that time they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him 
and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now. If he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. This is the passion of the Lord. So often when we gather together as the family of God, we declare our beliefs, our faith together. So I now invite you all to declare the faith of the church. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. John will now lead us in prayer, after which we say the Lord's Prayer together. For our prayers of intercession, let us pray. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you know as you entered Jerusalem that the welcome of the crowd would turn to rejection, and yet you still came, and still you died for them. We thank you that you still come to us, inviting us to respond and share in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The mystery and beauty of your love for us becomes revealed through the death, resurrection and triumph of your Son. So come to your church, filling it with love, harmony, humility and faith, and equip us to speak of your compassion and majesty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to your world blessing it with peace, justice, freedom and hope. 
We pray especially for our world, ravaged by the problems of a global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to those who are sick and bring your healing. We pray for all who are sick or unsure of their health at this time. We pray for the medical teams and the support networks who are working especially hard to maintain the health of our nation and our world as we live with the difficulties of a global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to those who grieve and comfort them. For your passion and death have brought us eternal life. We pray for all who have died in faith and those whose faith is known only to you. In these difficult times, we pray for all who grieve and for all who are supporting them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, on this day we are reminded of how easy it is to welcome you as the King of Kings, but how hard it is to follow in the way of the cross. May this day lead us to a deeper understanding of your kingdom, a greater awareness of your love, and a clearer sense of your purpose and the faithful willingness to walk with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. So let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we're now going to spend some time singing praising God together, because the Bible tells us to give thanks, because God is good. So let's sing together. So some notices um, to end our time together this morning. Uh, And first, I need to begin with some thank yous, huge thank yous to our community groups. Firstly, Um, a number of us have been engaging with the amazing work that has just been going on all around us. A huge thank you to all those working in White City, in Tuffley, in Robinswood and beyond. It's just been an awesome week, guys. It's just been so amazing. 
thank you for all you are doing. Um, just praying for all of you out there who are really practically serving others, you know, getting meals to them, getting food to them. Thank you so, so much for all that. And uh, it is, as I say, just been awesome. Thank you. Special call out this week to from Ross um, at the club on uh, Tuffley Avenue, the club at the park. Um, they are running out something called the Community Grub Hub. Just love that name. Um, they're going to be working with the uh, council and with Gloucester City Homes. A great opportunity for people to access frozen meals delivered to their door for a really low cost. But also um, that low cost can be subsidised further either by donations. If you'd like to give towards that, then let me know. I can make sure that you get the donations to Ross. Um, or to the right person, whoever that is, um, or um, again, there's funding available, so please do um, point people towards that. Or there's also a citywide project um, run by the Darcy's, a very similar format, um, with meals being delivered, frozen, cooked, um, and then delivered um, to to homes. Again, I believe there's some they are also subsidised. So you know, a really really great project. Um, it's been great to talk with Will a little bit. Will Mansell, who's running that, um, he works at the Long Table, and now he's um, working with the Darcy's and some other organisations to get um, this amazing model off the ground. So uh, God bless you, Will, and all working with you. Um, and another thank you, huge thank you to Kath, to Catherine, to Sarah, to Rosa, and to so many who have helped us use those symbols that mean so much to us um, throughout the week and especially for Palm Sunday. It's I know a number of you have been really sad that we've not been able to do those things that, that we, we, we like to do. We've not been able to decorate the church in the way we usually do. We've not been able to see those symbols that mean so much to us. But we've been able to explore some of those symbols, to use them to help us pray and to follow the story of of, of, of this of Jesus um, up to this beginning of Holy Week. So thank you so much um, for all of that. And I know that will continue through Holy Week. We'll find ways to to use those symbols that mean so much to us and help us understand that story, that story that we are a part of. So thank you so much to all who have been involved with that. Barnabas Buddies um, continues so if you would like to be a Barnabas Buddy if you'd like to be um, someone who can listen you can maybe give someone a call occasionally to check they're okay um, then um, contact Catherine, Catherine if you would like to have a Barnabas Buddy if you would like someone to have a chat with and uh, stay in touch with then again contact Catherine um, she would be really pleased to hear from you so it's a busy day it's a busy day it's wonderful um so we have evening worship tonight at 5 30 that's um with hillary and uh we have youth alpha at seven with ian um again you should know how to access those if you don't then look on the page or contact me and i'll make sure that uh, we'll get you tied into those and then holy week we have a morning prayer each morning as usual and then we have special reflections monday to wednesday at 7 30 they'll be on facebook live and then there'll be a link off the web page onto um, YouTube. Monday, Thursday, we're going to have a special Agape reflection. If you don't know what one of those is, then uh, come along. That will be lovely to see you there. If you could bring a favourite food with you, it could be a very lovely bread roll. It could be anything really um we're just going to come we're going to go explore the idea of feasting together of feasting together with jesus that very special meal that jesus um uh, had with his disciples on monday thursday i'm going to be looking what it means to gather together to eat as brothers and sisters so i'm um, looking forward to see you, seeing you there um i think it's six o'clock six o'clock on monday thursday and then on Good Friday, we're going to have our first bit of Messy Easter, Good Friday morning, Messy Easter at home. There'll be some crafts with some familiar faces. Looking forward to that. That will be up at certain points throughout the morning. And then again, a few more on Easter Saturday to keep you going. Um, and then East, uh, sorry, Good Friday afternoon, we'll have our usual hour, two to three at the cross. And then Easter Sunday. Well, I think actually it's going to be a really special day maybe closer to that first Easter Sunday where the disciples were shut away in that room, experiencing both both faith and fear, faith, fear, uncertainty, but real joy that the Lord is risen. Uh, and uh, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be celebrating that Jesus is alive. We're going to be exploring faith, exploring uncertainty. And I believe it's going to be a really special day and I'm looking forward to uh, sharing that together. So there will be communion at seven o'clock streamed onto the Facebook page with Bishop Rachel. And um, that again will be accessible from the web page a little bit later on. And then we will gather for our praise and worship and celebration service at 10 o'clock. And I look forward to seeing you there. So a prayer of blessing for us all. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only son bring you by faith to his eternal life. 
Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him on the way of the cross. Amen. May the Spirit who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. So I hope to see you for coffee at 11 o'clock. Coffee will be on Zoom at 11 o'clock. And again, any problems accessing that, just let me know. I'll be available on my phone or um, again, just message me here. So God bless. See you at 11, I hope.